Well, where? Oh, game crash. Oh. The GPU temps are fine. Yeah. Yeah. Game crash. But the game is still crashing because the GPU temperatures are a lie. GPU temps under 80 degrees Celsius are usually fine. Most NVIDIA graphics cards don't thermal throttle until around 85 degrees Celsius. Thermal throttling is when the driver reduces the GPU clock to a lower speed to prevent overheating and damage to the hardware. If that doesn't work, the card could shut down. So we know the GPU temp is the average temperature. How is that calculated? We don't know, but it's probably a weighted average. How many sensors are there? We also don't know, but it could be over 100. Do you see the problem? If just a few sensors detect temperature over the thermal limit, but most of the sensors are below the limit, the average temperature would seem fine. But that does not mean your GPU temperatures are fine, and that's exactly what happened to Punchline. He pushes his NVIDIA RTX 3070 Asus card by streaming graphics-intensive games like PUBG, Daisy, Escape from Tarkov, and others. He's been having game and PC crashes for years and has been getting worse lately. We've tried everything to fix the crashes. Nothing has helped. We ruled out temperature issues early on because his card averaged around 65 degrees Celsius and his case airflow was great. Then we downloaded Hardware Info 64 and checked his GPU's hotspot temperature. What's the hotspot temperature? It's the highest single temperature sensor out of all those 100 plus temperature sensors on the GPU. The hotspot temp should be higher than the average temp, obviously because it's the hottest spot, but it should only be about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius higher than the average temperature. Punchline's hotspot was about 30 degrees Celsius higher. That's equivalent to a balmy day, and that's just the delta. His hotspot hit 105 degrees Celsius at one point. If you want to check this on your graphics card, just download and install Hardware Info 64. I have no connection to the program, I just learned about it online. You run it with sensors only, there's a lot of info, but don't be intimidated. Scroll down to your graphics card and you'll see the average temp and the hotspot temp. Right click each to add them to your taskbar if that's where you want them. If you also want to see them in game, go into settings by clicking the cog in the lower right corner. Go to the on-screen display settings in the OSD tab. Scroll down to your video card in the window. Click the GPU temperature, which is the average. Check the boxes for enable OSD, show in OSD as, show label in OSD, and show unit in OSD. Then do the same for GPU hotspot temperature. You can minimize the program when you're done, but make sure you keep it running when you go into your game. All this led me to believe that Punchline's crashes were due to his GPU hotspot temps going too high, so I took out his video card to open it up and check the thermal paste on his GPU. His Asus Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 3070 has eight screws. They're all Phillips head size one. Different cards, even with the same chip, will have different screw configurations, so always look it up before you start. I use the top of the iFixit case to keep track of which screws come from which holes. These screws have springs, so if they get loose, they still keep the board and the heatsink connected with pressure. Next comes the scary part, separating the heatsink from the PCB. Be careful not to pull out the fan wires and don't touch the edge connector that slots into the motherboard. If you damage that, the card could stop working. The thermal paste and pads act like a glue, so take your time and be firm, but gentle. There we go. All right. Once separated, lay the parts side by side. His fan cables are long enough, so I didn't need to disconnect them, but that's always an option if you need more space. It's hard to see from the video, but this thermal paste is very dried out and thin. I slowed it down and zoomed in so you can see the reflection on the metal GPU casing right through the thin veneer of thermal paste, which is now more like a solid, dry clay. This is clearly the source of the crashes. Just like the CPU on your motherboard, the GPU on your graphics card has a heatsink with some fans on it to disperse the heat generated by the chip. The surfaces of the heatsink in the GPU aren't perfectly flat, so thermal paste fills the microscopic imperfections that allow the heat to conduct away. That paste doesn't last forever. It can dry out. There's also the pump out effect, which pushes the paste out from between the chip and the heat sink due to the thermal contraction and expansion. Given how much paste is around his GPU, it looks like that happened here. His card is five years old, so this thermal paste was overdue for a replacement. These are the thermal pads. They work the same as the paste, but go on other card components to cover larger gaps. They can be compressed to conform to irregular shapes and bridge the contact between the heat sink and the component. Punchline's thermal pads are soft, spongy, and sticky, so they're perfect. 
Replacing thermal pads is harder than replacing thermal paste because you need to get the thickness exactly right. Otherwise, it could accidentally create too much space between the GPU and the heatsink, causing new heat issues. As long as the thermal pads are not stiff and solid, they can stay. Even if they rip when you pull these things apart, you can just piece them back together. I had these wipes which came with some thermal paste I bought. I also use isopropyl alcohol and cotton swabs. The important thing is to remove all the old thermal paste before applying the new paste. This plastic scraper lets me gently remove the old paste from around the GPU. When you're done, the heatsink should be shiny like a mirror and the GPU shouldn't have any paste on the surface. For the new paste, don't skimp by buying cheap stuff or using old paste. Spend the 15 bucks and do it right. I recently repasted my CPU so I had some leftover Noctua NTH2. There are other pastes that may be better, but we're going to keep an eye on his hotspot temps going forward, and if we need to repaste again too soon, we'll try another brand. But Noctua makes good stuff. Make sure the GPU and heatsink are fully dry and no fibers are left behind before applying the new paste. It's okay to use a decent amount of paste. It's non-conductive, so if it spreads beyond the GPU, it won't damage anything. I spread it across the entire GPU with the other side of the plastic scraper. Lift the board and lower it straight down using the screw holes as your guide. You don't want to smudge the paste around if you can help it. When screwing it back together, just tighten the screws finger tight, meaning you stop applying torque when the screw stops turning. The springs will do the compression work. Don't over tighten. Instead of tightening each of the four screws around the GPU one by one, I tighten each screw a little at a time until all four are snug. These fans are at the bottom of the card, so they're hard to access. So since it's here, I give them a good cleaning with isopropyl alcohol and cotton swabs. Never let fans spin when cleaning them. It can burn out the fan motor or worse, send electrical feedback into the card and damage it. That little Minecraft guy helps support the edge of the card and prevent sagging. Once the card is back in the PC, it booted up fine and we ran PUBG to test the temps. Look at that. His GPU average temps are about 10 degrees lower and the difference between his average and his hotspot went from about 30 degrees to 11 degrees Celsius. We also ran Fermark to stress test the GPU further. These are the temps in Fermark before repasting, and here are the temps after running Fermark for 20 minutes straight. Just like in PUBG, his GPU is now running cool without any crazy hotspots. I hope this video helps you, and if you're having any crashes you can't explain, check the hotspots. And if you have a 50 series NVIDIA card, you might be out of luck because it seems like they removed access to that reading. If you got a 50 series card and you still have the hotspot reading, let me know in the comments. Yeah. I don't know if you can use this, but it's free kale and lettuce.